I continue to just, I adore Section 31 and DS9. I think it was like a brilliant little creation that across three episodes was basically so much of what that series represented. It had a great performance from William Sadler as Sloan, Mm -hmm. who's competent, somewhat frightening, but has a point of view and is like, feels fully fleshed out in what that world is supposed to be. To Enterprise's take, which is a guy wearing the same clothes who does not intimidate me whatsoever. Right. There's like nothing scary about him. He has no power because they can't get to where Enterprise is. Like, the, as we mentioned before, it's too early for Section 31 to have technological capabilities that would allow them to do anything on a galactic level like this. And they just, even if it was part of the plan, the whole thing of like, well, you changed the deal and now we're screwed. It just, that felt like the worst way that you can treat what this organization is supposed to be. I would just, I would just stop showing them at this point. It's not an original thought, but you're not getting anything from this. It's, it's the misunderstanding of why section 31 worked in DS9. Section 31 works in DS9 because it is, it fits the tone of that show perfectly. Like the tone and the themes and everything that they've set up through that whole series works perfectly and, and sets up section 31 very well to, to be this sort of ambiguous uh, uh, entity of Starfleet. You can't just pick and choose. You can't just pluck that out and use it in something else and have it make sense. And they yep. keep trying to do it and it never works. Yep. Like it's like uh it's like after after Watchmen and uh Dark Knight Returns came out, everyone was like, Man, I get it. Should we give Superman a fucking gun? <laughs> you know, and it's it's like, no, you're missing the point. Don't have Superman start breaking people's backs and shit. It's that it's it doesn't work that way. You're yeah, you're yeah. you're not taking the right lesson out of out of why these things work. Um it just doesn't fit the tone for Enterprise. Enterprise is not like nothing about Enterprise says secret Starfleet underhanded yeah. uh, espionage unit. It's yeah. like it's about bringing these elements together and stuff. And and it's about naivety. Yeah, it's just more than fit. that. Like DS Nine yeah. is not yeah. about the, the, Section Thirty and One is the opposite of being naive in DS Nine. They are the ones that know everything, and it's whether or not their mm-hmm. approach to what they know is a ethical approach that Star Trek would agree with or disagree with. This one is just, and like you've built the show around Archer, who's kind of like a bumbling, not particularly good at anything character. So to have this infrastructure that's behind him, that has been built up to be hyper competent, is like they don't, there's no reason they should exist, and they don't have anything to say in this show. So I agree with you. I you know like I said previously. If it was some different version of Section 31 yeah. that matched the tone and time frame of this show to, to, to show maybe even the naivete of an early version of Section 31, maybe they are making the wrong decisions. Maybe they're doing things wrong because they've never dealt with anybody off planet before, you know, whatever. Yeah. But um, that, I think, would work a lot better I, than I, uh, just, yeah. Yeah. you know. I, I think that I, I think you could see them exist in this era as a military force that has kind of been pushed aside because now humanity is focused on this exploration angle, which is which does fit Reed's character because he's supposed to be the military man, right? But yeah. the military doesn't seem to exist in the way that it does. I think that you could have set them up as a kind of power struggle between the optimism of Starfleet versus this old Earth thing of like well you need a military if you're going to go out into space and you're going to do stuff and i think that that works well section 31's origins in some ways you know you know what it should have been it should have been it should have been what the makos turn into yeah Yeah. right because i mean that's the entire story from star trek beyond is that uh edison can't deal with the new non-violent uh Attack that the that Starfleet's taking because he feels like it's really naive and he's more he's more attuned to the uh, realities of warfare. Yeah, so the, the um, t- they took our jobs argument from South Park basically is his, yes. yeah, his yeah. point. 
but but it would make sense that as Starfleet turns more nonviolent, if you want to say that they ha- ever did, uh, the milita- the more military wing starts becoming more specialized, and that's when yeah. you get that's what Section Thirty One gets born out of. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. With like that. if you had kept Hayes around, if you had kept Major, is that his name? Major Hayes, the maker. Yeah, Major who, Hayes. Who, uh, yeah, the third season. Yeah, if you had kept him around and like started pushing him that way so like at the end of the show the implication is that he is the first head of section 31 yeah. that'd be really interesting yeah it'd be cool yeah yeah and i think you'd avoid the problem of showing too much you know right if you do yeah. it they, they yeah. do here they never actually call this guy section 31 he mentions section 31 as part of like a paragraph mm-hmm. of powers or something in the federation but he never calls himself that i think that, that would have been the way to go 